All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and before we get started with this week's Based on True Bigfoot Encounter Story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest, wanted to say thank you and congratulations to Amy out there. <clears throat> I have something special for you and your family. As a matter of fact, me and a good friend Chris, uh, a listener here, has also uh, pitched in uh, for this month's free giveaway. So I've got a couple things coming to you. One of them's a surprise. That's from Chris. The other one is Tales of the Cryptids, uh, mysterious creatures that may or not may or may not exist. Uh, this is investigated by. Uh, uh, Halls, Spears, and Young. <clears throat> so you can get that, and uh, we'll have that off in the uh, old mailbox for you on Monday. Monday, so expect that next week. So congratulations to Amy and your family, and uh, hope you enjoy all of those. Let me uh, turn this off real quick. I can I can clear my throat now and mute. <laughs> you can probably hear the pop though. Whatever. Hmm. <laughs> But I will always drink my coffee in your ear. That is what I do. All right, let's get on to this week's Bigfoot Encounter story real quick. And just so you know, I have um, a couple more good giveaways. So if you guys want to get on that, don't forget, get over to PacWestBigfoot.com. PacWestBigfoot.com. Get up there. Get started for free. Join the clan and enjoy the encounter stories, okay? So, <clears throat> clear my throat. There we go, and let's get on with this week's Bigfoot encounter story. Bigfoot terrorizes family outside of Prospect, Oregon. We moved outside of the Prospect area back in the mid-1990s, and while the community seemed pretty nice, there was one thing nobody talked about, and that was Bigfoot. <clears throat> we learned this when a Bigfoot terrorized our family, not even a week or two after moving there. Seriously. The community of Prospect, its people, and everything else were and are great, but there are Bigfoot that roam there, and locals know all about it. Why they keep it under wraps and what happened to us, I will share with you here. Prospect, <clears throat> home of the Bigfoot. Prospect is a close-knit town, and it is literally located in what most would call the middle of nowhere. And that is why I, uh, we liked it, and why we moved there in the first place. <clears throat> there were great uh, they the people were great kind and once you were better known well the conversations about life and everything else could be shared for hours upon hours in the cafe or the steps of the old general store there was only one conversation <clears throat> that was not so popular one that kept uh, to a complete hush and others well they simply acknowledged it and left it at that and that conversation was all about bigfoot we would come to know this thing in a hurry, actually, and we would know how scary it can be as well. There are places like Bluff Creek, California, and so on that get a lot of a sp the spotlight and are called the home of Bigfoot. Personally speaking, the real home of Bigfoot is Prospect, Oregon, and the locals and state officials know it's true. The Screaming Hills I will mention this, but not to be haughty or anything like that. I say it because it's true, and is why we moved way out here. My husband is my husband is rather a semi-famous actor. He has co-starred in some pretty popular films, especially westerns, back in the 70s and 80s, and even up to that point in the 90s, when we had our incident with the Bigfoot. People did not treat us extra special like they often did when living in Southern California. <coughs> being down there, we did not want to raise our children there, and at that point we just had our first child, a boy. When the scream started, my husband was actually on site out in Montana shooting a new film. This was around 1994, I believe. This would be one of his last films as he would jump into directing and creating commercials for an auto company and a couple other Fortune 500 type companies. We had just moved in. It was just after the fall, around the first week of October that year, uh, that year, I recall. I was still unpacking things. Like I said, my husband was pretty famous, but we lived normal, quiet lives without the need of assistance like some in the industry. I was upstairs, I remember. <clears throat> Our son needed to be fed and put down to sleep. It was still warm outside, so I had a window open, 
At first I thought it was the sound of a truck or a large vehicle with a bad belt heading up or down Crater Lake Highway about a half mile back down the driveway. It kept getting louder and louder until I finally realized it was not the sound of anything mechanical. Instead, it sounded like an animal or a person screaming. Of course, my husband the next day swore it was either a coyote or a husband or, <laughs> or a wolf as they are back. Not many, but they are a few. there are a few roaming around then and today. The other possibility was a fox, and I have heard fox before, so I took his word for it and left it at that. For nearly a week and a half, <clears throat> at least every other night, the screaming would come and go, and finally I decided after that to keep the windows shut from then on. Besides, it would be getting colder soon enough. Eventually, at night, I felt as though I was being watched. Being watched in the woods. By late October, my husband had wrapped up what would end up being the next to his last film, ever. He was taken a few months off before he started directing commercials coming the beginning of January, so that was going to be great, we thought. But instead, we ended up feeling so scared that we decided to move, and did by spring of the following year. It started with the screams, and one night, while enjoying a drink around the stone fire pit off the back deck, it started up again, only this time my husband heard it. I noticed his eyes seemed... Well, like he had a quizzical look, as if he was confused about what it is, what it was himself. He stood up, walked over towards the forest, and just stood there listening. The scream became louder and louder as whatever it was came closer. And then it stopped. My husband stood there, staring off into the dark. Next thing I knew, he was walking rather fast, telling me under his breath to get inside fast. After we were back in the house, he shut off the kitchen light. He stood there still as a rock, staring towards the northeast part of the property. He pointed and told me to look towards a group of Douglas fir trees that edged the property. It was the scariest moment of my life. A large shadow stood out from behind a tree. My husband said later it had to be at least nine feet tall, with, with further inspection the next day. It seemed to be looking in our direction as it moved back and forth from behind a tree that did not hide all of its, mass the whole, its whole massive silhouette. <clears throat> My husband got on the phone with the local police, which were few up this way. The next day, we would start to learn quickly that we were dealing, <clears throat> we were dealing with as a couple law enforcement officials showed up in the morning. And what surprised us the most, a representative from the forestry department that was actually located not far from our home itself accompanied them. My husband took them out to where the person or thing was seen, and they found what they found was rather crazy, to tell you the truth. Footprints. Footprints. Large, human-like footprints. They came back from the thick of the forest, and then headed back <clears throat> the, uh, the way it came, it seemed. My husband would tell me that the rep from the Department of Forestry gave a call to her office, but then walked away out of earshot. It was one of the police officers, well, deputies, that stayed behind and told us something we just simply could not believe at first. After they wrapped it all up, the one deputy stayed behind and began telling, of, uh, telling us of his own experiences out here, plus the many reports of Bigfoot. Well, quite a few of them that roam this area, actually. <clears throat> he told us of reports up and around the Crater Lake area over the years plus that of the natural bridge in the outskirts of the town of Prospect itself. It was believed that the people in town, most of them lived in town, for the very reason of avoiding these things. Of course, nobody had ever been hurt or killed by one of these things that they know of, but there have been many missing people over the years out this way, and more often than other places in Oregon or the Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> Basically, it sounded as if there was a family or group of these things that lived in the area, and were long-time residents themselves, and he warned us to stay out of their way. His own experience was that of being chased out of the woods. Even the feeling of being hunted crossed his mind. But he was also sure that the Forest Service, located not too far away from us actually, knew of these things and kept tabs on them as much as possible. 
saying how the lady from the department had acted earlier, that's pretty much was how we felt. I knew that they knew. We still sat out on the deck <clears throat> at night in the evenings. However, my husband always kept a rifle nearby from that day on, always. Chased out of the woods. My husband had a small role back in the day with an actor named Charles Bronson. He told me that Charles was as fearless, it seemed, in life as he was on screen. <clears throat> my husband was also fearless, if you ask me. Even when he was chased by a Bigfoot, and realized that these things were in fact uh, Bigfoot that one late afternoon. The Rogue River is not far from the home, actu our home actually. Just a few hundred yards away, <clears throat> or so. Uh, okay, maybe a little bit further. But my memory of the layout of the land is fading today, as it... I did not spend much time out there because of these animals. Anyways, we, he woke up early one day to get some yard work done. And that way he could spend his time getting some fishing in late in the afternoon. <clears throat> it seemed a few weeks since we'd heard any or had seen anything, and the fact that the seasons were changing rapidly, we figured they must have left. They did not. His experience started right before he decided to head back home along a wide trail that led from the house to the river. He said it started with clicking sounds, not rocks either, but more like a tongue-in-cheek clicking mixed in with what were the sound of voices. One voice came from up the river, the other down the river. They were not that far away either, possibly, he said, within 30 yards or so, and he'd come to realize that fact. Being a mostly cloudy day, he could not see anything until a couple minutes later, <clears throat> when out of nowhere a large stick came hurling at him from down the river, landing by his feet. He turned and looked and immediately watched as a large bipedal and hairy monster, a Bigfoot that is, and about ten feet tall, he swears, pick up a large rock and threw it at him, landing in the water, splashing the water up his legs. He said his heart jumped as he grabbed his stuff and ran back down the trail towards home. He also heard footsteps and looked to his right to see another one, a dark brown colored smaller Bigfoot practically running right at him. He stopped, pulled out his revolver, revolver and let off a round in the air. <clears throat> Everything, every noise came to a sudden stop. He watched as the Bigfoot stood there, partially covered behind a large spruce tree, stared at him, all the while baring his teeth. It did not take long, however, and he was soon hearing what was the other one he first saw walking fast up behind him. He bolted all the way back down the trail once again. By the time I saw him come crashing through the trees and into the more open backyard, his face was white as a ghost, and he had his gun drawn and at that point, and pointing it into the forest itself. My husband is no weakling, and whatever made him that fearful, well, it must have truly been the monster he described. He said it seemed to be or look like the ugliest ape he'd ever seen in, his, in the face, but the body of a man or a person. <clears throat> the first one he saw seemed to be growling at him, and it was huge. The other, a lighter colored one and smaller, was literally chasing him through the woods all the way back. It would stay back about 20 yards or so, but kept pace with him all the way back. It was also mumbling and making that clicking sound, he said, as well. From that point on, <clears throat> it was a scary place and an environment to be, for us to be in. Shrieks, slaps, and rocks through the window. For nearly another whole month or more, we had several slaps on the side of the house near our baby bedroom, uh, boy's bedroom, so we moved him in with us for the time being. I can't tell you why they do that, but once I actually watched as one ran right up to the house. Its silhouette in the dark, it slapped it and ran back off into the woods as if it was simply toying with us. It was not until Christmas almost that we decided to get out of town and simply leave for good. <coughs> it was a few days, a week perhaps, before Christmas Day. We were sitting there watching the old black and white version of Christmas Carol on TV. I jumped out of my skin. My husband ducked, covered, rolled right into the hallway to get his rifle out as a large rock the size of at least two softballs together came crashing through the window of the living room. That was it. My husband jumped out the front door and started firing shots off randomly into the forest without a care in the world, and I was fine with that. 
We called the sheriff's office and the same deputy showed up within a half an hour. He noticed tracks all around the house in the snow and it seemed there were literally several of them, large and small, walking around and around the house pretty much all evening. He helped us board up the window for the night until we could get some, someone from Eagle Point to come and fix it the next day, fortunately. But that did not stop us from deciding to leave for good. I remember the last night there. My husband and I stood out there on the deck. It was nearly dusk at that point, mid-January, and it was time to go in for sure. <clears throat> it was getting dark, as if to give us one more thrill and chill down our spine. A shriek from the pit of hell came from about fifty yards away in the forest near the trail. My husband is a great guy and a patient man and a rather quiet and peaceful person. But he walked in the house, came back nonchalantly with his rifle, pointed, aimed in the direction of the shriek the shriek came from, and pulled the trigger. That was the last gunshot and scream we would hear on the property or in Oregon ever. He moved back to sunny Southern California where he retired not long ago. To tell you the truth, we want nothing to do with those things. They are wild animals that need to be left alone. Period. <laughs>